Geely, who owns a handful of auto brands, including Volvo and Polestar, has developed an extremely long-life battery technology that has class-leading energy density and charges quite fast as well. Stick around as I discuss what we know so far about this exciting LFP battery technology. I'm John, and this is CleanerWatt. In an ideal world, batteries would be inexpensive, last really long, charge really quickly, be energy dense, and have great safety. However, most current lithium ion batteries, even LFP batteries, only check two or three of those boxes. For example, lithium iron phosphate batteries are generally known for their low cost, high safety, and long life, but Geely, their new short blade LFP batteries take longevity and safety up a notch, charge really quickly, whilst also achieving an impressive cell level energy density of 192 watt hours per kilogram. Now 192 watt hours per kilogram isn't breaking any records when it comes to lithium ion batteries, but when it comes to lithium iron phosphate batteries, that's really impressive. And that's enough energy density if it's packed properly in a battery pack to provide, for example, a vehicle like the Model 3 to get over 300 miles of range. So in all reality, you could say that this new LFP battery technology really checks all five of those boxes that I mentioned earlier. Inexpensive, lasts really long, charges quickly, is energy dense, and has great safety. With that being said, as I move into more details about this battery technology, I want to talk a little bit further about that energy density of 192 watt hours per kilogram, and also compare it to other lithium ion batteries on the market, including other LFP batteries. Now, as a reminder, the reason why energy density is so important when it comes to a battery comes down to the fact that if you have a more energy dense battery, it allows that battery to be lighter and or smaller. And if you have a lighter and or smaller battery while still providing a good amount of capacity, that lowers the weight of the electric vehicle and makes it more efficient, which of course, in turn, once again, allows it to have more range. It's this cycle of lower the weight of the EV, increase the range, increase the energy density of that battery. And that allows the battery pack to have a good capacity while still being lighter and or smaller, which in turn, of course, increases the range further. It's really important and energy density is important. And traditionally, LFP batteries don't have super high energy density, but new technologies like this battery from Geely do have pretty solid energy density. Now, when you compare this to other battery technologies on the market, of course, compared to nickel-based cells, this 192 watt hours per kilogram is lower than those nickel-based cells. For example, the 2170 batteries manufactured by Panasonic found in the Model Y have a cell level energy density of around 263 watt hours per kilogram. In addition, Tesla's CyberCell has an estimated cell level energy density of around 256 watt hours per kilogram. So obviously those nickel-based batteries have higher energy densities, but when we move to other LFP battery technologies, like for example, BYD's LFP blade batteries, those have an estimated cell level energy density of around 168 to 175 watt hours per kilogram. And CATL's prismatic LFP batteries, like the ones that are used in the rear wheel drive Model 3, those have a cell level energy density of around 160 watt hours per kilogram. So as you can see, a cell level energy density of 192 watt hours per kilogram for an LFP battery really is pretty impressive compared to the competition on the market right now. Now, more important than cell level energy density in the end is pack level energy density. And we don't have the exact numbers for this new Geely technology when it comes to how efficiently it's packed. But according to what I can tell, Geely has designed these cells to work in a cell to battery format, meaning that they don't have to waste extra packaging with modules. In addition to that, these prismatic blade shaped batteries should also be able to be used in a structural battery pack as well, which would also be an extremely efficient way to pack them. So with that being said, I expect that when these batteries actually get put into an electric vehicle, they will have a packing efficiency at least somewhat equal to what BYD is able to do with their blade batteries. And you can see the estimates there for the pack level energy density of BYD's blade batteries. And the packing efficiency is pretty solid. But once again, I expect 
that these new Geely batteries will have a very similar pack level um, energy density efficiency. So I expect that this will actually lead to an increase in range with these new batteries as compared to other battery technologies. I would really love to see Tesla use these batteries in, for example, the rear wheel drive Model 3, because I think that would allow that vehicle to have over 300 miles of range. Now, I do want to make one side note here, and some of you may be up on battery technology and you know this already, but BYD does have a next gen blade battery that's supposed to be released in the somewhat near future. And we don't know all the details of this battery cell just yet, but based on what I've read, it looks like that battery technology will have a cell level energy density of around 217 watt hours per kilogram and a pack level energy density of around 190 watt hours per kilogram. But based on the information that I've come across, it doesn't look like this is going to be straight lithium iron phosphate battery technology, but instead it's going to be lithium manganese iron phosphate battery technology or LMFP. And as a general rule, LMFP batteries are not going to last quite as long as LFP batteries. So even though BYD's next gen blade batteries should have a higher energy density, once again, they probably won't last quite as long as the Geely battery technology. And we don't know anything about charging speeds and other things like that and, and cost. So I still believe that this Geely technology is extremely exciting, especially when it comes to LFP batteries. So I've mentioned that the Geely batteries have long life. Now I wanna talk about specifics around that. Geely did publish a press release about this battery technology on June 27th. And in this press release, it was written, quote, using multi-element doped electrode materials combined with a battery's smaller size and low internal resistance has given the new short blade EV battery technology a reduced internal chemical reaction rate, significantly extending the life of the battery. Now, some of you may have easily understood that sentence I just read, but for some of you watching this, maybe it was not so easy to understand. So let me break that down just a little bit further. First of all, Geely mentions that they doped their electrodes, and that's just a simple term um, given to putting additives in the electrodes of a battery to improve their performance. That's a common practice in the battery industry to make batteries conform to whatever characteristics the manufacturer desires, whether that's faster charging, longer life, etc. So this is a common practice, um, and Geely doesn't tell us the specific dopants that they used in these batteries, but it's interesting that they did use that to help increase the life of the battery. They also mentioned here the battery's smaller size. And the reason why I believe that comes into play is because a smaller battery potentially is easier to cool. And so I believe that's why they bring up here the smaller battery, because that allows the battery to stay cooler. And a cooler battery, of course, is going to last a little bit longer because you're not going to have heat related degradation to that battery if it's able to stay cooled efficiently. And in addition, they mention here low internal resistance. And when you have high internal resistance in a battery, that leads to excess heat buildup. But if you have low internal resistance, that leads to less heat generation, which once again limits the amount of heat degradation to a battery cell. When it comes to more details about the specific cycle life of these batteries, in this press release, it's also written, quote, According to Geely's test, the cycle life of the new short blade EV battery technology can reach 3,500 cycles equivalent to charging and driving for 1 million kilometers with minimal impact to battery range. Now, based on what's written here, it looks like this battery technology could even last beyond 3,500 cycles because it's specifically listed here can reach 3,500 cycles. And then it adds with minimal impact to battery range. But even if the cycle life isn't more than 3,500 cycles, 3,500 cycles is really impressive and is enough for that battery technology to outlive most of the vehicles it would be put in. For a little perspective, this press release goes on to state about the cycle life quote, based on the average family driving 20,000 kilometers a year, the new short blade EV battery technology can be in service for up to 50 years, significantly extending the usage life of the battery, improving the residual value of secondhand EVs and reducing carbon emissions by more than 80,000 tons a year. Now, I believe it's also important that I point out here that beyond the number of cycles that you put a battery through, the actual amount of time that's passed, the calendar life of a battery technology is really important as well. Just a battery sitting on a shelf, even if it's properly maintained, will age a little bit with time. So I don't know if 
the doping and the other things that they've done to these batteries actually makes it to where if you use this battery just a little bit and you kept it maintained properly, if it would actually be still viable for that 50 years. I don't know if that's what they're saying here with this example, but nonetheless, it is impressive. When it comes to safety, in general, LFP batteries are known to be quite safe, but it looks like Geely has taken this safety to a whole new level. In this press release, it's written, quote, the new short blade EV battery technology uses a high strength, high thermal stability, high heat resistant diaphragm with a highly stable separator paired with safe electrodes resulting in higher energy density and safety. In addition, Geely Auto has applied its self-developed self-fusing technology on the electrode surfaces to block short circuits in the event of accidents. If the battery cell is punctured during extreme shock, an aluminum foil layer will fuse into the battery diaphragm to create an insulating layer, preventing short circuits and thermal runaway events. Now that's all fine and good, but Geely also put these batteries through a number of tests and it looks like these batteries really are extremely safe. In this press release, it's written, quote, during testing, it was simultaneously punctured by eight steel needles in unison, each with a diameter of five millimeters and left to stand for one hour with zero ill effects. In addition, the new EV battery technology underwent a 5.8 millimeter infantry rifle bullet penetration test with no thermal ignition events. But beyond those puncture tests, Geely has done a lot more testing beyond that. In this press release, it's also written, quote, Geely also put the new short blade EV battery technology through the industry's first six extremes serial test that includes seawater corrosion immersion, extreme cold environment, high frequency pack bottom scraping, 26 ton overweight rolling, single pack side collision, and fire roasting. With a new short blade EV battery technology's patented grid frame design, energy absorbing cavity, three layer sandwich bottom guard plate, C2B integration, thermal runaway control system, and multiple other safety features, the battery passed all six tests successfully. So when it comes to really the summary of the safety of these batteries, it's written, quote, the results showed the new EV battery technology did not experience thermal runaway, smoke, ignition, or combustion in all cases. Beyond the impressive safety of these batteries, these batteries, according to Geely, should also charge quite quickly as well, much in part thanks to the thin carbon nanotubes that they use in these batteries. On this topic, it's written, quote, the new short blade EV battery technology has effectively solved the problem of high internal resistance found in long blade batteries available on the market. Geely's newest battery also uses long, thin carbon nanotubes to create a highway for ion transmission as well as additives to improve the film permeability, making it easier for lithium ions to travel between electrodes, therefore greatly improving fast charging performance. When it comes to specifics about charging speed, these new batteries should be able to charge from a 10% to 80% state of charge in around 17 minutes. Now the use of carbon nanotubes in batteries not only helps with charging, but it also does help increase the safety and the lifetime and energy density of batteries as well. Specifically, when it comes to how these carbon nanotubes increase the energy density and the charging speed of a battery cell, carbon nanotubes have more space available for lithium ions than for example, traditional graphite. And when you're able to store more lithium, that leads to more capacity. And if you have more available spots for lithium, that leads to faster charging without lithium plating. There is however one catch to using carbon nanotubes, and that comes down to the potential high cost to implement this into a battery. For example, according to this University of Michigan wiki page here, carbon nanotubes appear to be a form of graphene and graphene can be quite expensive. Thus, the low cost of LFP batteries may be negated by using carbon nanotubes. So this battery technology may not be as affordable as I initially thought. Nonetheless, it doesn't negate how impressive these batteries still are. And it goes beyond that because these batteries also have great cold weather performance as well. In this press release specifically about that, it's written, quote, in addition, in extreme cold environments, the new EV battery technology has strong discharge capacity and longer driving range than long blade batteries. In ambient temperatures of negative 30 degrees Celsius, the capacity retention rate of long blade battery on average fell to 78.96%, while the new short blade EV battery technology retained 90.54% of its capacity. 
With that being said, even if the use of carbon nanotubes in these Geely LFP batteries causes them to be more expensive than other LFP batteries on the market, I still believe this is an exciting battery technology worth watching. And in addition, the cost of graphene will likely go down in the future as we use it more and more. So once again, I believe this is an extremely exciting battery technology, and I'm really excited to see how these batteries actually live up to the hype here. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.